So we've been talking about mutations, and now it's interesting to think about what causes these mutations and what can happen because of it. Now, we all know that problems with mutations include, for example, things like genetic disorders, which are inheritable, and we're also talking about cancer, right? So either it's a somatic or a germline problem, mutations more likely than not create problems. In the last video, we talked about the idea of evolutionary types of mutations, and I actually forgot to mention that 99% of all mutations are deleterious and ends up causing problems. Lots of them are actually neutral. You don't see most of the mutations, and the majority of the mutations that happen actually get fixed or destroyed by the cells of your own body. They're in charge of fixing that. So if you have a bad cell, the cell actually kills itself in a process called apoptosis, which the cell realizes it's doing bad, and it kills itself before it's too late. And if that fails, your immune system recognizes that cell is dangerous and kills it as well. And so a lot of mutations tend to be fixed by your thing. And by the way, even before you even have get to the point of apoptosis, there are processes involving correcting mutations as they happen. And so we have mechanisms to try to protect us from mutations because 99% of the time they're going to be deadly if they're not silent. But a lot of time they're silent because most much of the DNA in your body is absolutely no purpose for protein making purposes that is. Okay? And so if they're not silent, they're mostly deadly. But one in a million, it might actually be beneficial. But most of the times you want to avoid having these mutations, especially when it comes to somatic cells. You don't want them mutating because you're going to end up getting cancer. So how do you get these mutations and why? how can you avoid them? How can you stop your cells from replicating like crazy? Because sometimes when you get cancer mutations, that's what happens. They grow like crazy, they make toxins, they displace other cells in your body, and that's why they kill you. And then they, they start going all over your body and growing all over the place, which is called metastasis. And then they're really, really in trouble. But cancer is a problem only if the cells are growing, displacing, or destroying a certain organ, either by actually taking over the body or by releasing toxins that destroy parts of the body. But if not, you just got a benign tumor. But either way, you don't want these mutated cells growing like crazy in your body and doing mitosis after mitosis after mitosis and screwing up you from the inside out. So how do you get these mutations and how to avoid them? What causes these mutations? Now, there are different, different sources for these mutations. Uh, one of the things that cause mutations is radiation damage. Radiation will actually just attack the DNA at the molecular level and cause changes in the DNA sequence, such as insertion, deletions, and substitutions, which will screw up the gene. In addition to that, chemicals like pesticides and pollutants and cigarette smoking, alcohol, and all other things could also lead to mutations. We call those mutagens, agents that can cause mutations, which actually, by the way, includes things like viruses and bacteria, sometimes can affect our cells and induce mutations in our cells. Exposure to too much ultraviolet, ultraviolet radiation or radiation from the sun can also cause mutations, which cause skin cancer. Byproducts which are added in food and additives and preservatives, all kinds of things and chemicals that we're not even aware of are commonly found to be carcinogenic. Carcinogens are, remember, chemicals which cause mutations. And specifically, they cause cancer mutations. Mutagens cause mutations in general. Carcinogens cause mutations which usually cause cancer. All right? And examples of that are, there are, by the way, more than 20 different kinds of carcinogens in cigarettes. So just food for thought. And normal pesticides and chemicals added in foods also have a lot of these things. But it's hard to live pure in this world that we live today. A lot of pollution, a lot of pesticides, a lot of food additives in a lot of different ways to toxify yourself with bad choices as well. So try to stay away from these things because they're definitely going to cause problems. You don't need to add to the problems because there's already some natural problems which are going to be happening. In addition to these things, there's also can be systematic problems leading to mutations. Sometimes during the DNA copy process, there are mutations that happen. Sometimes the chromosome just breaks apart and there's lack of chromosome stability. Right? Sometimes there's spontaneous mutations which fail to be repaired by the DNA repair mechanisms, which I talked about a few seconds ago. Sometimes the mutations will happen in between the DNA transcription process. So in other words, that DNA gets copied into an RNA, which then it gets translated into a protein. Sometimes in the middle of it, that's where the mutation will happen. The RNA actually gets damaged. Sometimes it's the environment that causes the mutations, and you're exposed to this environment, stress levels, things like that will make this more likely to happen. Sometimes the DNA copy process doesn't happen right, like I said. Sometimes it happens in a non-nuclear gene, such as a mitochondrial gene that doesn't have as much mechanisms to control mutations as our nuclear genes happen. 
And so that's why we have so many mutations. We have systematic biological things which cause mutations as well. Remember, life left mutations as a possibility. Think about it. You wouldn't want to get rid of all of them. If you got rid of mutations, period, and completely fix the chances of, fix, of having mutations, you would never change. And without a change, you would never have evolution. And since the environment changes, if you don't change, your chances of surviving as a population, remember, organisms don't evolve, populations do, but your chances of surviving as a population, as a species, um, as a war, new species ar arising from these changes would not ever happen because you wouldn't have changes. So the cell is never going to be perfect at correcting changes on purpose because it needs that one in a million good uh, beneficial mutation in order to actually create evolutionary processes. But remember, you don't want to add to your mutations with uh, a natural process such as radiation, carcinogens, and mutagens because you already have the systematic problems leading to mutations especially DNA copy problems. One in a billion times out of the, every base that you copy, you make one in a thousand mistakes. But then that mistake is caught by another mechanism that fixes those mistakes, and then it's one in a billion after that fixing. But since your DNA is very long, that's actually a lot of mistakes every time your cell is copied. So that means that that's one of the reasons why we get old. We get old because... Throughout our lifetime, our somatic cells are gathering these mutations because every time our cells go undergo mitosis, they gather more and more mutations. Every S phase, every time DNA is copied, one in a billion bases suffers a mutation. Now remember, some of those will be silent. Some of those will be missense instead of nonsense. But some of them will be nonsense and screw up that cell. But as long as you have some cells which are okay, they can always kill that bad cell and correct the organism. But as we get older, we, try to, we start making more and more of these mistakes as we gather more and more toxins, as we expose more and more to radiation, and as our immune system becomes weaker and weaker to actually kill those bad mutations. So one of the reasons we actually get old is because or we, get, we gather more mutations as we get older, and that's actually part of life as well. Remember, we want to, life wants us to die, because if we don't die, the old generation will live forever and always outcompete the young generation. If you had the wisdom of your years to add to a perfect, never aging body, no young person could ever beat you in terms of competition, which will make no sense for you to have children because you will always outcompete your children. And if you would always outcompete your children, you would never evolve. And that means life could not change and evolution is critical for life so that means life on purpose left mechanisms to make us age and one of the mechanisms tied to aging is actually these mutation mechanisms also these mutations will cause problems in the actual gametic cells like we talked about during non disjunction and that's what causes populations to change sometimes as well and will cause a lot of genetic disorders all right and finally, the last reason why we can get mutations is actually exposure to pathogens. Now, you do have an immune system to protect you from that. And an immune, you have the skin that protects you from the pathogens from getting inside of you. And you have uh, white blood cells which attack these, these, these and engulf these enemies. You have antibodies which uh, chemically attach and tag these enemies. You have responses to, uh, to that are chemical responses as well which are non-specific responses which just attack any random thing in your cell so you have an immune system and organs of the immune system designed to protect you from invasion but sometimes viruses and bacteria and other things like that end up getting inside your cell and when they get inside your cell they actually might sometimes cause those cells to mutate there's a lot of viruses which like HIV HPV EBV and other viruses that actually are related to uh, cancer formation processes. For example, the EBV virus uh, is tied to Burkitt's lymphoma. The HIV virus is, is tied to uh, all, several kinds of lymphoma as well. And the HPV virus is related to cervical cancer and things like that, which is why it's good to get a vaccine for that if you're a girl. And so sometimes pathogens can induce mutations because the way the viruses work remember is they get into the genetic code of our cells and they change it to make their own copies of their own viruses and when they're doing that they might end up screwing up some of our own dna and cause mutations which might, might lead to cancer so there's a lot of reasons why these mutations are happening you have natural systemic problems in the dna copy process you have radiation carcinogens mutagens you have failure to correct the problems which are systemic you have caught mutations of the RNA product, you have mutations of the proteins itself, you have changes because of 
mitochondrial mutations which are less easy to correct when they happen. You have changes because of exposure to stress and other environmental factors. You have changes because of pathogens such as viruses and bacteria. When everything is said and done, it's very, very hard to survive a long, long time in a situation like that. You do have, of course, an immune system to protect you from, the, from a lot of these things. The immune system protects you both, both from the pathogens and from the bad mutated cells. You have white blood cells, and you can see that on the left hand corner, that actually engulf bad cells to kill them off. And you also have internal cellular processes to catch the, correct, the bad mistakes and correct them, as well as at cell death processes, where the cell activates lysosomes to destroy the cell from the inside out and kill itself in order to protect the body as a whole from those mutations. So between apoptosis and the immune defense system, you're going to have protection from those mutations, unless, of course, your immune system is compromised. So if you have a bad immune system, you're not going to be able to protect yourself from some of these mutations. So let's talk about some risk factors that lead people to have more mutations than other people. Young people and old people don't have good immune systems because the babies have developing immune systems and old people have immune systems that are breaking down. So they're more exposed to mutations and that's why cancers are more common among old and young people. Also, if you have a poor diet, which have exposure to a lot of mutagens and carcinogens and other environmental factors, you're going to have mutation problems. If you actually have exposure to causes of mutations, such as carcinogens and mutagens and bad chemicals of cigarette smoke, for example, look at the way the lungs work, look at the way doing an event of, of someone who smokes a lot. All of those chemicals, there are over lots of chemicals of smoking that affect, it can cause cancer, like I said. Also, if you have a sedentary life with lack of exercise and endorphins re released by exercise and you're gathering a lot of body fat, you're compromising your metabolism and all these things, you might have more chances of getting those bad mutations and you're compromising your immune system. Exposure to uh, pollution, not having water, good water, good air, and good sunlight, really close to sunset when the sun is not too hot and not too much radiation. All of those things are, are going to be exposed. It's good to be outside a little bit every day to get those good vitamins from the sun. If you have too much stress, that could lead to more mutations as well because it, it puts chemistry in the cell that leads to problems. If you don't have enough rest for your body to actually fix itself up, if you are living a life of excess where you either working too much or eating too much or doing anything too much it will lead to problems. And of course, immune diseases such as HIV or, or in other immune diseases which are going to compromise your immune system. So these are the things which will cause people to have more chances of having cancer and other mutations where they are. And including, for example, old people will have more non-disjunction events as well because they're, the machinery to make cells is broken. So how do you avoid having these problems? Well, you follow the new start. New start stands for nutrition, exercise, water, sun, temperance, air, rest, and trust. If you practice new start, you can avoid mutations. Eat well, good nutrition, exercise often, drink a lot of water to help detoxify your insides because water, but if you drink a lot of water, all that water goes out through your kidneys and the kidneys are forced to work and take those toxins out. Be exposed to good sunlight, not too much of it, but during the sunset so that you can actually get those vitamins which are good and not so much of the free radicals which actually hurt you. Live a life of temperance without, ex without any excess. Balance your life. Good, clean air. Good for, for avoiding mutations. Rest a lot. Sleep seven to eight hours every day. And trust something higher than yourself spirituality or even a sense of greatness or purpose will give you a better chance of surviving even if your trust is in love of to someone else or to a higher being or to a higher purpose people who have faith either in in something greater or in a greater purpose usually have healthier lives as well practice that to avoid mutations which are causing def defects on your on your offspring and on yourself and you probably will avoid a life of problems.